So what was it like to be there during Katrina? Well, it's, it's hard to describe, as uh, has already been noted by our other guests. When you walk into an atmosphere like that, it is surreal. It is like watching a sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. I was gone for a month with my family. Uh, we were in Dallas, came back uh, four, four weeks after the storm, mm -hmm. and went to a part of town, uh, Lakeview, which is where some of the most significant flooding and destruction took place. When you drive into Lakeview on the heels of the storm, the first thing you see is about a 50-yard wide neutral ground, about a half a mile long, 20 to 30 feet high, stacked with debris. Oh, so it's wow. just one neighborhood. Wow. And I was there for an hour, drove through that area, thinking about my past, homes I'd lived in, mm -hmm. uh, schooling, ball, et yeah. cetera. Mm -hmm. And within 45 minutes, I had such a massive headache People have talked about the ooze and the soot. Mm -hmm. Many people had to leave for medical reasons. In 45 mm -hmm. minutes, I was so physically ill, I had to roll up my windows. Uh, it, it's hard to really imagine that kind of uh, destruction in our culture. We're so mm -hmm. comfort-oriented. Yeah. The whole site itself yeah. became right. toxic, uh, emotionally yeah. and physically as well. Right. Huh? So where did you find God at work? Well, a number of stories I could offer you that are similar to those that have already been offered on the show. One particularly I think uh, I'd like to share is the story of a kid named Kurt McKnight, 17, 18-year-old African-American kid, tough life, living on the streets basically, no parental involvement. Prior to the storm, he had been brought to a church we had just planted, and he was sharing how his life was coming apart. One of the families in the church there that was ministering to him said, Kurt, you have some great leadership gifts, but you're using them in the wrong way. You're using them on the streets, leading people down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And it was really evident God was really trying to reach this kid. And so we worked with him. A week before the storm, he was kicked out of his house. Uh, he got in a big fight with his stepfather. Uh, his mom didn't want anything to do with him. He went to live with his auntie hmm. down in the Ninth Ward just a few days before the storm. And as many people did, they stayed behind. Now, when the storm came through, the floodwaters rose within hours. He was trapped. His auntie was trapped. Their community was trapped. All of his friends, as he tells the story, were out on the streets looting, shooting, all the stuff, all the carnage you've seen on mm -hmm. CNN and other mm -hmm. places. And he sensed that God was telling him, here's your chance to listen. I've been knocking on the door of your life. If you wow. want it to go in a better direction, now's your chance. So rather than joining his friends, he spent about 10 days chest high in water, bringing food, water, and medical supplies to the elderly and the sick. Oh, Since then, he's gone on to get his GED. He's in church, and his life is going a different direction. Wow. Yeah. That's Disasters like that could turn someone against God. Right. But yeah. this kid... The story of Soul Storm really is, as has already been mentioned before, and I love the story of Lazarus. I mm -hmm. feature it prominently in the book. Is that right? Because here's, here's the story. We have two ways of reacting. How did Mary and Martha react? Mm -hmm. Where were you? Where were yeah. you? Yeah. What happened Why to you? you here? If you were here, yeah. Yeah. this would be different. Yeah. Whether it's 9-11, Virginia true. Tech, Katrina, mm -hmm. that's many people's first response. Yeah. But Jesus walks into the scene, He's not distraught. Mm -hmm. he's, he's torn by the loss and the pain. He grieves. He grieves. And the, the, the imagery there is important because while God is moved by our infirmities and our destruction, he's not lost control. Yeah. Everyone looking in, with the exception of Jesus, thought all hope was gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the message of Katrina. It's the message of soul storm. When you think all is lost, God can take you to places you never thought imaginable. That's, that's an incredibly powerful message right here because people who go through disaster, again, just like Mary and Martha, the first question is, where were you, God? Right. Right. Why, you know, why weren't, weren't you here? How could you let this happen? Mm -hmm. And yet in the aftermath, we see some tremendous examples of God's grace, do we not? Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We realize that he never lost control. Eli like Weissel said, in his, you know? uh, his book, Night, mm -hmm. yeah. he tells how as a, as a kid, he saw the horror of the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah, one of the best quotes from the book is, never shall I forget that night that took my God from me. Right. But the end of his story is much different. Yeah. He's gone on to acknowledge God is in the midst of disaster. 
uh, and that there is grace beyond measure in the worst scenario you could possibly envision. You know what? I can't add to that. And we're going to stop right here for a moment. We'll be right back. We're back. Bruce, you mentioned Eli Wiesel in, in his book. He tells a story at one point of his experience during the Holocaust of three men who were hanged, two men mm -hmm. and a youth. The men died instantly, but the youth hung there for about 30 minutes trying to die. Mm. And the whole camp was paraded past. And a man in front of him said, where is God? Where is God in this? And Eli said that from within him, a voice said, he's there hanging with that boy. Yeah. That's not a bad note, I think, to end this discussion on when it comes to God and tragedy. And I think that's important for us to remember as well. I want to thank mm -hmm. each of you for being here. Thank you. Thank you uh, very your much. stories are tremendous. And I want to thank you for being a part of this as well. We hope to see you again next time. Until then, you take care of yourselves. We'll see you then. Bye. If you've been battered by life storms, you'll want to call for the free booklet, Weathering the Storm. It will give you comfort and encouragement. Call 888-940-0062 or write Lifestyle Magazine, Box 1000, Thousand Oaks, California, 91359. We'll pick up again. All right.